Finishing, finishing, you know, so it's not what's on her website. It's anything you think of. She asked me, and generally speaking, I'll say, yeah, I'm, I can do that. Um, I'm helping somebody just get started on, he wants to do a, 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 an armoire, but he doesn't know how to design it, how to get started, he's a woodworker. Can you, can you help him out with his plans and planning? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> no, but if, I've been working with wood for a long time because I, I really do love it. I still really do love it. That's the, that's the interesting thing. I've been doing it all my life, but, it, but even when I'm having a good time, when we're like somewhere, right, I'm thinking I want to get back to the shop. Even though I'm having a really good time, Really, really good time, but, oh, great, tomorrow I'm back in the shop. All right, let's, I've got a lot of things to show you, probably too much, so if it runs too late, um, by all means, just stop. This is the display case I made for the guy who also has the conference table, and world-class things there that are pretty much priceless. That's why I told him I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put anything in. But uh, we're going to go through this pretty fast. But you're going you're gonna to see the beginning and the end. These are the long stretchers, and here's my pattern. And you want to start off milling lumber really well. The better you mill lumber, the better your joinery is going to come out. For instance, if I'm taking, I'll just use simple math, because that's all I am, is simple math. If I'm taking a half inch off of here and a half inch off of here, I've got an inch off, right? If I want to end up with an inch and a quarter there, obviously I need to mill this thing exactly two and a quarter. But if I'm wrong, if, if this piece isn't milled exactly like that piece, and I'm cutting the same out, I'm not coming up with the same mill. So something I, I realized years ago, the better you can have your joiner, planer work, keep sharp knives, set them really well. The better you can mill your stuff, your, your craftsmanship goes up. All right, I'm going to go through this. I'm just playing. Now, remember I, I showed you about routing the ends to shape? That's exactly what I'm doing here. And notice that I left this in because if that hollows out, it doesn't plane well. So I can plane that shape and then finish pants on that. Okay, and, and this I showed you. And those four, and these are split legs. So you see four, four, three, three, two, two. All right, so <clears throat> this wedge, let me go over here. This wedge is like that wedge. So instead of cutting that ahead of time, I cut, I cut this straight. Then I put my wedge there, and I can use a sharp saw and mark it. Now the wedge, this like this wedge, was longer, so I can tap that in where I want it. Drill a couple holes, put some screws in, take a template, trace that out, and trace that out, cut it, and then go back in and tap it all in, put the screws back, and this in relationship to that will be the same as that in relationship to that. And I'll know it's tight because it was longer. So when it tightens up, sometimes it's all about when you do something. So I'm gluing this up. And actually, this is a really interesting um, cabinet making job. Let me keep going. All right, the top, the bonnet. I, I, you probably all have done this, I kerf it, you know, change the say on the blade, and then I can hand plane it. And that's cab, Frank's cabinet shop, and they're going to do the finishing. And that's there. And I think, all right, there, this is, again, I said I, I do dovetails, and uh, this is,
This is that table. We use it in our house. This is about, this is probably like 20 years old. It's, um, may not be 20, maybe 15 years old. This is um, bird's eye oak veneer, glued out to solid oak. And that's what you're seeing there. You didn't use Constantine's glue, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll go through these relatively fast. I'm gluing there, there, I'm gluing this top layer to the bottom layers. Here, shaping it. We'll leave this here for just a minute or so. We'll see what comes up next. Okay, so let's. I know I was asked to, so I'll just kind of. But most of the time, I use Typon, and I, and I don't use um, uh, waterproof. That doesn't, I don't, that doesn't bother me. It's more expensive. It gets on your clothes. It ruins all your clothes. Glue brushes, you can't reconstitute. It's just, you know. So... <clears throat> I'm just going to show you the motion, like this, this is that leg, obviously not that leg, and this was the first um, mock-up of that leg. I just took a piece of ratty, ratty uh, oak and mocked that. Now the hard part on any of these legs, on any of my tables, that are like kind of like this, is that you have mirror images. So, and, uh, and we talked about templates and such. Like this goes, let's say that way, and that goes that way, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, this leg is not identical to that leg because it's a mirror image. So this leg and that leg are the same. This leg and that leg are the same. So you keep those legs together. Because if you're taking measurements off, you could easily make the curve the wrong way. It could easily go that way instead of this way. And when I say easy, it can be real easy. <laughs> so you always want to keep testing yourself. Now, a lot of times I'll, I'll set one spoke shave heavier and then move with faster. And then I'll, I'll set a spoke shave uh, very fine and you just clean it all up. And then after that, so if this is set very fine, and I have car devices in now, one of, the, one of the things, I'm going a little faster because I have a lot to show you, but if you have questions, if I'm going too fast, just tell me. But this side and this side are book matched. Uh, maybe we can do this. I was looking for this before. This is another one of those things that I, I said we cut, open it up. It's a nice grain. So, cut, kind of open it up, now you've got that and that. Right? Okay. It makes, it's not hard to do, doesn't take any more time, but your overall piece when you're done, you know, it really um, pays off in, in how it looks. Your eye's not being distracted by one piece of wood that's got, you know, it doesn't quite match that piece of wood. But when you're, when you're trying to uh, spoke shave the, the um the shape in on that. Do you want? Do you wind up going back and forth, side to side, frequently, or do you try and get one side? Oh, that's to, a, that's a great question. I tell any of my students, and they're doing something that's not as as complicated, right? Don't ever focus to get that right. 
right? Go kind of overall because you'll wind <coughs> up really screwing it up. Um, and again, patterns are, are good and, and any type of measuring. So in a lot of cases, um, I have where I, I have set measurements on a pattern. So if I have a thin piece of wood that bends, you know, there, here, this one, this leg here, you can't really see, but all of these are one inch, one inch, and then the, the measurements here. So, and again, left, you know, you gotta, you, this, this one was a tough, toughie to do that project. Right. So, this is three layers, so it doesn't snap. I went over that. So, so Glenn, just for the people that haven't shaped curve stuff, so you're starting at the bandsaw. I do a lot with the bandsaw, mm -hmm. and then I, I, a lot of times I'll set a, a spoke shape a little deeper, not real deep, and, and then I'll go, um, let's, let's see if we can get this in here. I did bring a carving vise, but I couldn't get it into here. When you're laying out the pattern on on the stock for the initial band song, you're not just orienting for figure for aesthetics. You're also thinking about which way you're going to have to spoke shave it. Yeah, that's that's true. Especially, uh, I mean, you don't want to have the curve running so that you have to shave against the grain. Especially. <coughs> You always want to go from a high to a low, and not from a low to a high. And 99% of the 